an island of striking natural beauty. Its culture and architecture reflect a rich Spanish heritage, accented by a strong Caribbean flair. The picturesque images truly define Puerto Rico, yet at the heart of that vibrant heritage remains a rhythm, a beat that connects to the time before Spanish colonization, predating the arrival of Columbus. It is the beat of the native people who once inhabited this beautiful island. We began this work together with Professor Herman Acuna at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras. And we worked together to develop a collaboration with the Instituto de Cultura Puerto Ricana. And together we wrote a proposal to the National Science Foundation. We used the funding to develop computer models of the petroglyphs in Caguana. For centuries, islands throughout the Caribbean were home to Taino Indian tribes. The Tainos recorded significant elements of their culture with petroglyphs, carvings and granite stone bordering their fields. The ceremonial park in, in Utuado, Caguana, was used by the Indians, by the Taino Indians, to hold a meeting once a year, which was an athletic meeting. In his diary, Columbus noted the tribe's recreation as a sign that they were an advanced civilization. Over time, the sports fields and most of the Taino culture got buried and became little more than a faded memory. In the 20th century, archaeologists rediscovered the Taino sports fields in Cuguana, high in a rugged mountain region of Puerto Rico. The carved rocks bordering the fields were uncovered and organized into a protected ceremonial park. Many have visited this remote place to see firsthand the remains of these intriguing Taino petroglyphs. As part of the Museums and Parks program, we have the Indian Ceremonial Park of Caguana in Utuado. Without a doubt, it's one of the most visited places of the Institute. We receive many visitors, from students on their field trips up to tourists from Europe and around the world. The park represents a fascinating archaeological find that is enjoyed by a broad spectrum of visitors. But with each passing year, the effects of erosion on the exposed rocks has become more significant. A preservation company was hired to clean the stones as a first step in what would become a multifaceted archival process. The way we scan these models is that we pass a laser over the surface. The laser is filmed with a set of cameras. Now those cameras can see where the stripe is across the surface of any rock and can, with software, then allow us to figure out exactly what that surface looks like in three dimensions. That process takes some time, and so when you're inside a light tent and there's not a lot of airflow and it's warm in the sunshine, uh, you can imagine how challenging that can become just in practice. While the lasers scan the length of each rock, Cameras placed at a variety of angles and distances were calibrated for proper triangulation. They captured and recorded even the slightest variations in the surface of the rock. After each scan, the data was synthesized into an accurate three-dimensional computer-enhanced replica of the rock. The moving laser not only created an exact image of the visible petroglyphs carved into the surface of each rock, but by measuring the smallest variations within the depth of the rock, the laser revealed images already erased to the naked eye. Centuries of erosion had worn away portions of the petroglyphs, making them almost completely invisible to the human eye. But even those faded sections can now be enhanced in the computer model and to make them stand out. When we scanned the petroglyphs in the field, we found out how challenging it was working in the Caribbean the weather was difficult, the lighting was very bright, of course it was hot and humid all the time. One of the things we did is that we built a, a light tent so that we could put the tent over the model of the particular object we were scanning and we could block the light and that gave us a way to control the setting a little bit more. That control was really important in order to get the best possible results. As the first day arrived, unseasonable rains threatened the project's tight schedule. Although the sun was expected to be the biggest concern, the rain and mud created a new challenge. Rain, rain, go away. Come again. <laughs> Washed out roads were nearly impassable. We really fought the weather for the week that we were there because there was a lot of rain and we didn't really anticipate uh, the mud and how that would make things difficult with just the practical thing of of plugging in cables and keeping things clean. 
The challenge of digitizing the Taino petroglyphs has paid off. Not only have the stones been scanned, archived, and digitally enhanced, but they are now more accessible. Three-dimensional computer models and spectacular images can be displayed on any computer desktop across the island of Puerto Rico. The pictures and the stones and everything with time they fade out, and so we can preserve them. We can take them to schools, show the kids the digitized models of those things. I have to say the students really enjoyed this project. We had a lot of opportunity to travel. It was a lot of hard work, but there were certainly points where they, they learned a lot of information and helped a great deal with the project. We incorporated students who were undergraduates all the way up through PhD doctoral students. They all had a role in the project and all played a significant part in helping us get the results that we got. We have found a way to preserve and enhance them so that not only Puerto Rican people can enjoy them, everyone in the world can have a chance to experience them. I love the fact that we're working with uh, these artifacts in Puerto Rico, the, the petroglyphs. It's really well known nationally and just to be able to put this into a, just a digital realm is, is really neat. It has been really nice working with this collaboration with Puerto Rico because me as a Puerto Rican I have learned a lot and I'm happy and glad how I can help the people in how to preserve part of the culture. Access is everything and there are so many treasures in the care of the Instituto that are just so difficult to access even for people who are here on the island. This project is an example of what can be done with new technology to give people access to the treasures that incorporate their various cultural heritages. Being able to be a part of that has been immensely satisfying just personally. I really think that there's a future for museums all over the country, all over the world, to continue to integrate technology like this into what they offer. The Petroglyph Project ensures that the connection of the Puerto Rican people to the vibrant rhythm of the Tainos remains solid and steady for future generations.